so the second load combination uh, lo load case which i would like you to review in this model is the push over load case which is also called as the non linear static analysis uh, that the load is applied statically in increments in an monotonically increasing ma uh, manner and your computer model is non linear so with each new push your new elements may crack or yield or degrade and overall your structure can show the damage or the progression of damage as you keep on increasing the loading this is called non linear static analysis so let me click on this particular case and modify it to show you how the load case of uh, non linear static analysis or push over analysis may look like you have to select the non linear static uh, load case type mass source zero initial conditions or you want to start it at the end of gravity non linear gravity or any other non linear load case so let's uh, start it with zero initial conditions for simplicity now the push over load which you can apply uh, the pattern along the height uh, it may be your own defined load pattern which is uh, taken from any load pattern which is previously defined like dead live or any other or it can be acceleration which is just uh, uh, you can say acceleration mass or uh, you can say story mass proportional load pattern or it can be mode shape load pattern uh, uh, which is modal inertia load pattern in which the pattern will be calculated by the program uh, and then the pattern will remain constant but its magnitude will keep on increasing and the pattern will be proportional to a particular mode shape which you will select from this list so if you select for mode type and select let's say first mode uh, program will calculate a load pattern which will deform the building exactly in the first mode shape so the pattern will look like mode shape it will be having the highest load at top and then it will keep on reducing as you go down and it will be applied and resultingly the building will be deformed in the first mode shape if you select for example uh, mode number 4 let's say which is the second mode shape in x direction let's say the the program will calculate a load pattern uh, in which the top few stories will be applied with a force towards right and bottom few stories will be applied with a force towards left so the building will deform as a result of the application of this pattern the building will deform like a second mode shape like, like a second mode shape which is for example number 4th mode uh, in the order or numbering of the program so if you want to use this mode pattern first review the model analysis results and see if you want to push the building use in the first mode shape which mode number you should use here so let's say that uh, in fact let's do that here let me go to model analysis results display show tables and view the tables related to the model analysis results so i go to analysis results then maybe model results and then model participating mass ratios so that table will appear and it will tell us which mode number is actually first mode or second mode or third mode in x y or rotational direction so here in this building it is quite regular building so i can see that the first mode is participating the most 76% in x direction so it is the fundamental translational mode because uh, no participation in y and z in first mode so only the uh, x direction mass is being excited and therefore it is the first translational mode uh, in x direction if I, if i animate this particular mode i can confirm that building will be swaying purely in x direction no y no torsion the second mode uh, is all 0 0 which means that it is pure rotational mode or torsional mode uh, then uh, third mode is uh, actually the first mode in y direction because it is having 70% mass excited in x direction and no uh, sorry y direction and no mass in x and uh, z direction so uh, for the second mode i can again go back 
sorry this u z is the vertical degree of freedom so if i go uh, here i can see that r z direction is is being excited actually the mass is uh, 75% of the mass is actually participating in r z and r z is the rotation about vertical axis which is torsional direction so the second mode uh, using this result we can confirm that it is the pure uh, torsional mode if we animate that mode we will see that building will be simply rotating about vertical axis third mode is the first mode in y direction then fourth mode is participating 11.7% in x and no participation in y and z so the second highest participation in x direction is the fourth mode so fourth mode is the second mode in in the x direction of the building so if i want to push the building using a second mode pattern i should select mode number 4 if i want to push the building in second mode direction uh, second mode pattern in the x direction right similarly this uh, mode number 6 is the second highest mass participation in y direction so it is the second mode in the y direction so we should have this information first and then we will be able to go and make a push over load case if we want to push our building using a mode shape pattern so different push over analysis require us to push our building using this pattern so we must have this information first then we will go to modify show and let me just show you this one so modify show and here you can see that i have selected this load pattern as mode and load name i, I should actually give first mode and then any scale factor if i want to give so now i am saying that push my building uh, which can deform it in the direction or shape of mode 1 now i know that mode 1 is the first mode in x direction so building will be applied with a story force pattern uh, which will look like the first mode in x direction so if i want to include geometric non linearity which case the mode mode shape should come from then the load application either it should be displacement controlled or full load or it should run as a time history so if i want to apply uh, increment incrementally increasing uh displacements or actually uh push over case so i should select for displacement control monitored displacement and the value of monitored displacement is 60 inch and then monitored displacement should be uh, defined that for which degree of freedom and which node number or joint number uh, the program should monitor the displacement it is simply saying that the u1 degree of freedom is the direction story number 9 and the joint number 39 this is the point at which the program should check the displacement of the structure after each push of the building and then when the that monitored displacement reach to 60 inches the analysis should stop so generally we give a node on the roof Uh, and it should correspond to the center of mass of the roof generally that is called control node uh, and the program actually monitors the displacement of that node uh, after each push of the analysis and uh, if the display and, and stops the analysis once that displacement reaches to 60 so i am actually saying let story 9 is my roof story because story 10 is just a mumty so my roof is story 9 and let's say that joint 39 was my center of mass point where the whole mass of that story is uh, is actually uh, concentrated or lumped by the program and u1 is the x direction degree of freedom because i want i am pushing my uh, you can say structure in the first mode shape of x direction so basically it is the x direction push so therefore i selected u1 degree of freedom so the program will start with uh, this particular load pattern with a very uh, minimum amplitude and uh, keep on pushing my building until the roof displacement which is defined by this particular joint uh, reaches 60 inches which we have defined right so that's how we can give a target displacement which means we tell the program push the building up till a certain level and this is how we define 
that level that we declare it as a displacement control so the program will apply keep on applying increments in force but it monitors the displacement and then uh, that displacement when reaches to 60 inches it will stop the analysis and analysis will be declared complete so the number of steps uh, using which uh, in which the program will apply that uh, whole pattern uh, we will be defining here in non linear parameters right so let me directly go to non linear parameters and modify the very first thing is the maximum total steps 200 so we are saying that the program should be applied should apply the that particular pattern in 20 step in sorry 200 steps right so it will divide that 60 inches of roof displacement into it will reach to that point in 200 total steps and then the the second option uh, that is result sa saved it should be multiple states or final state only we want the program to save the results or all responses for each increment of the push so we will select multiple states and then there is a minimum and maximum range uh, you can just click okay multiple states means that the program should be, should save the results for each increment in the in the load pattern which it is applied so the basic idea of pushover analysis is that if i go let me go back to this particular displacement control option this one which is the load application or target displacement where we give if we know this number that what should be the displacement of control node in future earthquake if we estimate that using some other approximate method then we can give that number here and program will push our building up to that level now all the uh, displacements and shear forces and bending moments and all responses corresponding to the roof displacement of this number will be actually your seismic demands so instead of performing the detailed non linear analysis you can get an estimate of non linear seismic demands using push over analysis also so actually the whole discussion is about what number should be used here as the target displacement up till what level our building will be pushed in future earthquake so that we can push it uh, up to that level and extract all the responses as an estimate of the non linear seismic demands so this is the whole idea of pushover analysis uh, and then there are a variety of uh, multi mode pushover analysis which makes use of more than one load patterns just like the rsa procedure in the linear elastic domain and then then there are many types of other more advanced or more complex pushover analysis procedure generally if you don't know this target displacement you can give it a very high number in the start let's say uh, like uh, 5% or 4% of the roof drift and uh, then after you make a complete pushover curve since the program is also or, or already required to save all the results at each load increment so later you can calculate at what displacement or uh, roof displacement corresponds to the future earthquake so you can always go back to push over result and extract uh, the results corresponding to a particular load step and that will become your seismic demands if you estimate that number later so i just give 60 inches Uh, which can correspond to a very high roof drift so i give an a node number which is roof number so i click okay and now the program will push my building up till 60 inches of roof displacement in 200 steps and it will save the result for each increment of loading so it's like carrying out 200 static analysis because program will apply a load increment calculate all the displacement and all the responses then apply another increment calculate all the responses and keep on doing it until the roof level reaches to 60 inches of displacement or that particular control node reaches to 60 inch of displacement so uh, then i click okay and now i can go for another push over load case in which i can select a load pattern which is which is pushing my building in second mode load uh, deformed shape 
so let's say mode number 3 was my maybe second mode or maybe it it was maybe the the y direction first mode whatever i want to push my building with pattern i can now select that one so multi mode push over analysis procedure require you to push your building with uh, with load patterns of first second third fourth or many number of vibration modes but the conventional first mode based push over patterns which are mostly okay for low rise buildings they only require you to push your building using first fundamental translational mode shape pattern because that display that that mode shape has the highest contribution in the overall dynamic response of those buildings